I'm ready. Hi, everyone. This is Nancy Allen. I serve as the executive director for the National Consortium for Health Science Education and just wanted to welcome you here today to our Wednesday webinar. Uh, our plan is to offer these um, once, oh, twice a month on Wednesdays. We have another webinar coming up next Wednesday. You should have received information about that. But today's focus, medical terminology and um, the consortium had an opportunity to hear Linda Stanhope. She was in St. Louis at our 2019 National Health Science Conference in early November, and her room was a packed house as she was um, sharing um, this information about tricks that she used as a um, former health science teacher. Linda is from Texas, and um, she currently has a title of health science specialist. And by that, um, I mean that she does lots of lots of activities around health science. And one of those being that she works with new teachers in the state of Texas. And so she has um, lots of people that she welcomes into the health science classroom each summer. She also does some work with um, HOSA, Future Health Professionals, and does some training for uh, first year or new HOSA chapter advisors. She's um, been fortunate enough to publish this book with Goodhart Wilcox. And today she's going to share um, how um, writing this book and also being a health science classroom teacher helped her develop a love for medical terminology. Uh, she's gonna speak for about 45 minutes, I believe. And then um, you have a feature here in Zoom, a chat feature. And so we'll have you type in questions and we're going to, then Linda's going to, uh, the camera will be on Linda. She's going to show you some um, hands-on activities, I think maybe in her, that she uses, as well as she'll be able to answer your questions. Uh, we hope um, that you'll enjoy this. We, we hope that you'll continue to come to our Wednesday webinars. And most importantly, we hope that you will approach your administration about attending the 2020 National Health Science Conference, which will be in Charleston, South Carolina. October the 28th through the 30th. The registration is open. The call for presenters is open. The hotel rooms reg reservations are open. So if you go to healthscienceconsortium.org and look under events, you'll find all that. With uh, nothing more to say, Linda, take it away. Okay, thank you, Nancy. Um, thank you guys for um, joining me today. Um, I, I really feel very privileged to be here. Um, so I'm gonna to try to give you some teaching tips. One of the things that I have heard teachers say uh, year after year is that they just hate teaching medical terminology because it is so boring. And I have to disagree. I think it's actually one of the funner classes to teach. And I really, um, I just think all the students, it doesn't matter what health profession they're gonna go into, they can really learn so much by going through a medical term class. Um, it's going to help them whether they want to be a nurse, a physical therapist, a physician, um, you know, or they're going into informatics. It's, it's just a really great course. So um, on that, basically, um, the way that I teach um, medical terminology is that my real focus is to use an engaging approach. Um, I like to try to use several different teaching strategies each day. And I teach it like I would any of my other health science class is I really like break it up um, so that there's a lot of different things going on and that the kids don't end up feeling like it's a vocab class that they're just saying word after word. So hopefully uh, some of these approaches will, will really help you to um, find some fun in teaching medical terminology also. Um, a few years back, um, Goodhart Wilcox approached myself and my co-author, Kim Turnbull, who's still in the classroom today, um, and uh, we said we would love to teach, you know, um, we would love to write a book the way we wanted to teach it. So we came up with a lot of different uh, features that they were so kind to let us put into the book, and we're going to look at a few of those today. Even if you're not using um, the Goodhart Wilcox book, these are really great just teaching strategies to use. Uh, when teaching medical terminology. One of the first things that we um, always start off with is, in my class was uh, looking at case studies. 
Um, I know your kids in your state are probably just like the kids down here in uh, Texas, but they love to hear stories. Um, they, they really love to hear what happened when you were out there in that working world. So Kim and I started writing down some of those stories. And we um, you know, changed the name to Protect the Innocent. But, uh, you know, basically um, kind of giving them that real life uh, scenario um, type of what is going on. So we start off with a case study and um, wrote that down for the kiddos. And then we would start bringing in um, additional things uh, like medical records, because that's where they're going to see a lot of those medical terms. Um, which always give us, as a jumping board, it gave us those talking points such as, you know, treatments, infection control, that type of stuff. So um, the case study that I showed you, and these, all of these things are going to actually be posted. Um, the, the PowerPoint will actually be posted if you want to go back and read it in a little more detail um, at the National Consortium, so you guys can actually read the story. Um, but then after we would go through the case study, like I said, we would provide medical records. And in this case, because what we were talking about was uh, strep and mono and that type of stuff, we started using um, lab reports. So this was a good way to introduce the kids to what they might see in a patient record um, there, you know, at the hospital or some other setting. Um, we also use like when we're doing um, when we're talking about the skeletal system, we use x-ray reports. When we're talking about, um, you know, um, the cardio, we're using echoes and that type, um, EKG reports. So that it really gives the kids a different flavor for the different things that they're going to see out there in the real world. Um, ponder this. Uh, what we basically did with Ponder This is basically we took those throughout the chapter, but uh, whatever chapters we were talking about, we would pose questions to the kids um, that we had already done the research on, um, you know, and in the book, we actually offer the answers to the teachers, but here's one I'm just going to give you an example with. Um, what do you think is the most commonly broken bone in the human body? And then we would have the kids at their table groups. My kids always sit in table groups. Um, that's just how my school is stu structured. Um, and then I would have them share their responses with their classmates, give them a few minutes to kind of, you know, decide which one. And then I would ask for, you know, each table, what was your answer? Then I would actually spill the beans and, and tell them that in this case, it is the clavicle. It's the most commonly broken bone in the human body. And then we talk about other common fractures, which were, you know, usually some of their other kisses, which were the arm, the wrist, the ankle, um, you know, hip that kind of thing. So, you know, it, it just, it really allows kind of a quick break from that real serious discussion, but you're still on topic. Um, and the kids really enjoy doing this. Another example of a ponder this is like when we were talking about, um, think about when you're talking about the kidneys and uh, some people are really like, that's a very boring unit. And, and personally, I think it's, it's a great unit, you know, to talk about um, the urinary system. But um, let's, let's look at aging kidneys and what happens if those kidneys in an elderly person, you know, are um, damaged? Um, how are we going to have to change like their um, drug dosages? How is this going to affect other things that are going on in their day-to-day -day life? So it just, um, you know, really brings in, once again, those real life stories to the kiddos. And you can do that with just any chapter that you're in. The other things that um, I always tried to do, um, like for instance, with the um, urine chapter is we actually um, do dipstick urinalysis. So basically, I don't know if you've heard of a company known as Pocket Nurse, but they, um, I would always buy uh, simulated urine from Pocket Nurse and then dipsticks, um, you can buy them relatively cheap. Um, and I would have all the kids actually do the testing. So they got that experience of what's happening, you know, there, um, you know, in a, in a common doctor's office lab. Um, and the kids then would, um, you know, read out the results. I used the HOSA um, rubric for the medical assisting skill to help the kids with uh, knowing the step-by-step -step directions. Um, you know, and so the kids, then we would talk about urinary yeah. tract infections and all of the things that would be, um, you know, 
what, you know, and what, what happens with the patient, um, you know, in treatments. And so it would just really open a door, but kids really like doing the lab and it's a very cheap lab that you can do. Um, another thing that Kim and I always tried to do was we would do things called team challenges. Um, competition. Um, we're, we're wanting the hands on a break. We've been teaching. Um, usually, the way that I would start off my classes, and we're, we'll get to bell ringers in a little bit. But I would start off with bell ringers, and then we would do a little bit of our PowerPoint, and then we would stop and we would take a break, and we would do an exercise, a challenge, um, a ponder this so that it kept it fresh for the kids and you're constantly bringing them, their attention back into the focus of medical terminology. Um, in this case, um, the team challenge, what we did is we actually um, would write down, um, had the kids, we gave them a list of the different parts of the respiratory system. And then at their table, they had to arrange it as though the air was being an inhale. And so then the kids would put all the little cards together, um, showing that um, the direction of the air, and we would come by and check that so that it gave us that opportunity. And once again, they, they had the opportunity at their table to discuss together, you know, how does the air come in and what, what organs it's passing through. Um, other examples that we use the same type of team challenge would be um, the blood th flow through the body um, or throughout the heart. You could use it with the digestive system, but these little team challenges, the kids really enjoy doing. You could even do it with a sub if you want to leave the answers for them. Uh, another example of uh, like a brain break that we use uh, uh, frequently with our kids is called inquiring minds, or that's what we called it. Um, but in any chapter, what we're basically going to do is we're going to take issues that kids have kind of heard a little bit about, and we're going to ask them to actually do some real research. So in this case, this one is from the neuro system, um, and they are um, looking at a concussion as a form of a traumatic brain injury and resulting from the blow of the head. We kind of give them a little bit of information. And then we tell them to work in pairs and look at online resources to uh, learn about current research um, and share your findings. And so the kids really enjoy doing this because these are topics they're hearing about every day, you know, from football players to, um, you know, somebody in a car accident, you know, they're hearing about these things. Um, and we really are trying to, the other thing we really want to do with the kids on that research is help direct them to areas where um, they are going to get reliable information. There's a lot of information out there on the internet. Um, of course, um, one of the downfalls of something like this is you do have to have internet access, um, you know, there in your classroom, whether that is on their cell phones, iPads, or a computer. So, um, this activity might not lend itself to every classroom, but most classrooms do have that equipment. Um, student challenges. Student challenges, basically, once again, what we're doing there is um, it's just a fun, interactive type of activity. Um, the one that I'm looking at right now is from the uh, special senses. And we had the kids beforehand, I've got a little picture of my bag up there, but I made up a whole bunch of little bitty bags there. I think hopefully you can see there's pennies and nickels and um, paper clips and safety pins, toothpicks. I mean, you know, um, all stuff that's really easy to have a, a plethora of somewhere, um, you know, at your house or that you can run to the Dollar Tree, which I do that a lot of. And um, I would make up bags for each pair of students in my classroom. And um, then they would blindfold one of the, the partners and they would hand them the object um, to see if they could identify what that object was. So at that time, then we start, uh, you know, we would spend some time in class talking about neuropathy and just different things that might cause an issue with patients being able to feel um, the textures and, um, you know, talk about just uh, different avenues there. Some other ones that we might use, um, I've actually placed a whole bunch of rice in a bag 
um, and then maybe a hidden one of the small safety pins in there and they have to find the small safety pins. You know, so just different things that we see with, um, you know, professionals using out there, such as like your occupational therapist, et cetera, that are trying to zone in on that um, ability to fill those things. Um, another student challenge um, would be, for instance, um, passive range of motion. And so we have written that up in the book. Um, but we've used both terms that a non-professional could understand. For instance, brush your hair. So the students are going to support their elbow um, and they're going to bend their left arm and they're going to repeat that, you know, uh, motion and figure out what motion is that um, that the patient is actually using. Uh, adduction, flexion, you know, and so we go through a lot of that, but we've kind of given them other terms to help them remember, um, you know, um, what this might look like. Um, you know, other skills, we, we, I use skills with every chapter. So when we're with respiratory, the kids are actually practicing with stethoscopes and listening to lungs, and we're practicing counting respirations. When we're in the um, uh, cardio system, we are practicing taking pulses. So, you know, you can add in skills anywhere, you know, with your uh, medical terminology. Um, and it, it doesn't have to be for mastery. Uh, if it's just nothing else, it's just giving them that chance to get a little bit of that hands-on. And generally you have that equipment uh, for one of your other health science classes. And so uh, you might as well be utilizing it. One of the other things that um, we, would, we did in the book actually is called Fascinating Facts. And um, the kids always enjoy this, um, you know, because they just think this is kind of fun. One of the things that I did in my classroom previous to the book is that I would have um, Fascinating Fact Friday. And so on Fascinating Fact Friday, each table group would get an opportunity during a six, six weeks, um, during a six weeks period that they would have the opportunity to look up fascinating facts for one of the chapters that we were going through. And then they would present them to the class for extra credit. And um, the kids really enjoyed that because it was something different and, um, you know, uh, they always loved the extra credit, so. Uh, searching the source, uh, what one of the, once again, this is back into uh, using a um, technique for research. You know, it's one of those kind of things they're going to end up in the college realm. They're going to need to do a lot of research. And so uh, we have posed a lot of questions there and actually given them sites to go to to um, understand what's going on with different uh, topics such as muscular dystrophy and the muscle section, obviously. And then um, we use a lot of tried and true ones, such as the uh, flashcard drills, um, which you guys have probably used. I use those a lot of times as um, bell ringers um, to get my kids focused when they first come in the room. Um, another bell ringer that I use all the time is diagrams. Um, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, you can use foldables, which I'll show you when we get back onto a visual um, at the end of the, the um, program here. Um, and then I do a lot of like whiteboard games too with my kids. Uh, one of the whiteboard activities that um, I use a lot is known as word surgery. And then um, the other one is word construction. We put a lot of those actually a, a unit at the end of each chapter um, of word surgery and a whole section of word construction for the students. But basically um, what it kind of looks like, I will place words um, in my classroom when I'm doing it as a review. Um, on a PowerPoint, just like what you guys are seeing. And for instance, the word is gastroenteritis. And the kids have to break that down if they're doing word surgery. They're gonna break it down and um, to where it is giving the definition, basically inflammation of the stomach and intestines. Um, I actually make it a competitive game. Um, and so kids get really competitive trying to figure it out and write it down on their whiteboard and put the correct answer up there quickly. Um, another example, cystocil. And so the kids have to tell me what this means. Um, with word construction, I'm doing, a, it's a little bit harder. 
So I usually don't start off on it. I usually start off with word surgery, uh, which is great practice for the kids. Um, but with word construction, I'm doing just the opposite. I'm actually giving them, um, for instance, inflammation of the joints, and they have to give me the medical term that that would, um, would be for that definition. So like I said, that's a little bit higher level. Other review games, I do card sorts where I'm taking my, it's basically like flashcards, but if you played a matching game with your, your own kids at home, essentially it's got uh, the word on one card and on the other cards you've got the definition and the kids have to um, match them up. Um, the fly swatter game, this one gets a little loud, but it's always a lot of fun. Um, where I actually have my kids, I've got, you can put these up on big old pieces of um, construction paper or um, on a um, butcher paper and hang them in different parts of your room. Um, and I do different lists. So my kids will rotate. They will be in like groups of six. And um, you've actually got one person that's got the answer key that's the caller, which that gives them the opportunity to be saying the word. Um, and then you've got one that's the scorekeeper, and then you've got two, um, a team of two on both sides where they are trying to find the word. So for instance, uh, since you see these terms, what the um, person assisting with that game would be doing is they would say, for instance, the word new, and um, the first team that hit the, the term neo would have gotten the point for this fly swatter round. Um, and so you just kind of keep doing that. And then I have the kids rotate um, to different ones in the, in the room. But the kids have a lot of fun with this one. They like doing it. It's high energy and it's a great way to review. Um, I use a lot of diagram drills. Um, when I'm using diagrams, generally um, when I'm introducing a chapter to the students, one of the reasons that we're going over these terms is they need to know it for anatomy. So one of the first things that I will um, actually address um, that first day or two is going to be looking at the anatomy with the terms that they're going to need to know. So here's a picture of a heart, for example. And um, I physically go over and we talk about superior vena cava. And what does that mean? Superior means above. And so we literally kind of break it down. I explain it all. And I tell the kids they're going to have a diagram drill the next day. The diagram drill the next day is going to be this heart. However, it will not have any terms listed on it. My kids will come in. I have these actually, um, the diagram that is um, drawn in a um, sleeve protector uh, where the kids can write on it with a dry erase marker. I let them work in pairs because I think that's really a productive way for them to do that. And um, they get to list as many of them as they can remember from the day before um, in the first five minutes of class. That gives me an opportunity to check roll, uh, check those emails, you know, do all those things that I'm needing to do. And then they, their five minutes is up and I'm checking it. Um, at that time, they all start stop and we um we look i put this diagram back up um for everyone to see and we check their work um, once again it's going to give them another opportunity many times i will call on a student to actually say the words um instead of myself because this gives them the opportunity to um, pronounce um, and work on their enunciation and um the first day that they do this they would have had to have had, um, let's just go with 15 correct, 15 out of the 20 that are listed here. And um, the next day they're going to have another diagram drill, but the next day they're gonna have to have 17 correct. And if they get that 17 or 15 correct, whatever the number is for that day, I give them a bonus buck, which I will um, um, allows my students to have extra um, points on their test or daily work. And I'll show you one of those when we, um, when we get back into the live view here in just a little bit. Um, but it's an excellent way. Um, and so we do the diagram drill for a couple of days there in a row. And then the last day, I let them know that you are going to actually have a quiz over this tomorrow, which of course 
during the quiz, they don't get to use a partner. Um, but um, it works really well. And then I pull these diagrams back out when it comes to six weeks test and semester exams um, to just kind of give them a, a reminder of it. Um, here is another one that, you know, sometimes there's not always a diagram that I, um, you know, that's nice and fancy type of diagram. But say when we're doing um, medical directions um, and terminology on that, um, I use um, my little gingerbread men. And so I would give my kids directions, for instance, um, on the posterior side, draw a line showing a transverse plane. And so it's really easy for me to walk around the room and see um, who is making a transverse plane. Um, it, are they on the posterior side? It's a very non-threatening way to check the kid's understanding. So I've just got like direction after direction that um, you know I've already kind of written down. And then after I've done uh, three or four, I will um, reveal what they should actually have so they can check their own work. Um, and they can see, you know, um, what it would have looked like. So um, I use all kinds of things. But, um, and for those kids that get it really quickly, um, you know, kind of to up the um, ante there, I let them come up with terminology and uh, saying what to place where. So that gives them that critical thinking while others are still getting practice. Chalkman, um, Chalkman's another opportunity. Um, I like to go outside. We actually have quite a few sidewalks um, around our school building and um, would use um, different terminology that I would have the kids. Uh, I would always give them a list of the terms that they had to um, write for me when they were out there. Uh, sometimes it's muscles, sometimes it was bones, sometimes it was directional terms. Um, but the kids really enjoyed doing that. Um, other kids that were not in my class always thought that this was just a really cool thing. It was almost like a, a semi-recruitment. People would stop and ask, you know, what class is getting to do this? And so um, that was kind of fun. We would do that quite a bit. Um, models. I used a lot of models in my classroom. Um, for instance, um, you can buy models that are wonderful looking models. I always, uh, you can order them from lots of different companies. I always used uh, NASCO. Um, but I could order little hearts like this and um, you could order, they, they actually are reasonable enough. I would order like one per table. So they were right there in front of the kids and they could physically see what we were talking about. Um, you know, they were always amazed, um, you know, and sometimes we would order uh, live ones in the sense that I would order like pig hearts um, or, um, you know, something from the butcher that we would also um, get to use. And medical terminology is very close to your anatomy and physiology. So I tried to use experiments and things that um, were used frequently in a science class. Um, sometimes I'm, I didn't have um, fancy models. So I actually have what I called, um, we came up with our own sometimes. Uh, for instance, um, my kids named it the creepy baby doll lab but I bought a whole bunch of baby dolls at the uh, Salvation Army uh, for 50 cents to a dollar a piece. And then um, just like I did on the gingerbread man, I would give directions to the kids uh, to place, um, in this case, you can see that I've got a mid sagittal line going uh, down the trunk of the body. You know, so I would just give the kids directions um, and um, sometimes written and sometimes verbal. We would practice with the verbal first and then I would do like a practice um, lab practicum where the kids actually had to do that. And then they would go and check their work um, after they got the written part done with me. I would already have a doll that was done correctly so they could physically see what where each mark needed to be. So uh, Creepy Baby Doll Lab was always a big favorite of my kids. Uh, they enjoyed it. And I'll give you some more examples. Once again, you can go back through the PowerPoint later on and and see those examples. Um, sometimes I would use collages. I know that sounds a little old school. Uh, we probably all grew up doing collages. Uh, this group of kids I have found have not done very many collages, um, but it still actually works pretty good when you're doing something like, um, you know, the muscles of the body. 
So um, my kids had a list of muscles and they had to um, find diagrams and point out those muscles. So it was just kind of a different way of doing it, but um, that made it kind of unique. But I, I did find that the kids tend to remember it a little better when they saw it like on a real, you know, um, body slash athlete there. Um, sometimes we would make models. Um, I've got one here and I can show you when, um, <laughs> when we go into the live. Um, but basically, this one is a Gatorade bottle, a glove, a balloon. Uh, I've got a rubber band and a straw. And uh, we cut the bottom out of that Gatorade bottle. And we basically are showing them what the, um, the bottle represents, the chest cavity, uh, the balloon, obviously the lungs. And then the glove is representing the uh, diaphragm. But this really helps the kids see um, how important the diaphragm is in the breathing um, as a breathing mechanism. Um, as it actually with expansion and all forces the air in and out of the balloon. So um, this was always a good activity for the kiddos. And um, basically very cheap. I just got a whole bunch of Gatorade bottles from um, the janitor. They were so kind to save them for me. So um, just tore off the labels. Um, other hands-on activities that um, I use pretty frequently um, things like using Play-Doh. Um, if you've ever had an opportunity to go to one of Starla um, Ewan's presentations on using the hands-on body systems, you know that you can just use Play-Doh for just about anything. Um, they're just, it's, it's amazing. Um, there's also other assist, uh, systems like anatomy and clay where you're doing um, that on the, um, particularly like on the muscles and with the skeletal system um, is just, um, really helps the kids understand a lot about that anatomy. Um, I use balloons, um, x-rays, um, all kinds of things like that that I would get uh, my kiddos doing. Here's one from the balloon. Um, this one was actually introduced um, at the National Consortium webinar last month, um, but you can see somebody was doing the brain there on the balloon. And I think, you know, when, when the kids have an opportunity to draw something like this, it really helps them um, connect one with that creative side, but it helps them understand what's happening in that, um, that little head of their own. Um, I also have used it with like body directional terms, um, et cetera. So balloons can be, I've used them for muscles. Um, here's a quick example of once again with the gingerbread man. Uh, here we're using them actually as a gingerbread man triage. So what we've done over here is um, tell the kids um, a little bit about what is going on with their, um, their little person. And then they have to code them. Are they going to be green, yellow, or red? They're going to tag them and move them to that triage area. Uh, so, you know, um, that was a, a fun one. And you might use it with medical terminology, but a lot of you out there are teaching other courses that that would be really um, a good one to use. So I wanted to show that real quick. Uh, once again, I, I do do Play-Doh um, and I will do things like Play-Doh um, Play potato surgery. We put this one in our book, um, but essentially we've listed the supplies that you guys could write up labs of your own. That would be easy enough to do. Um, I've given you and the kids directions on what they're going to do. Um, make a large potato shaped ball, add pipe cleaners, um, uh, for the arms and the legs. Um, they're gonna make a uh, face and leave room for that thoracic and abdominal space. Um, and then essentially, we're, I give them a patient history of what was going on with their patient. Uh, Mr. Spudman is a 36-year-old male who was involved in a motor vehicle accident. He was the driver and the only victim. Um, so I've kind of just given them a little storyline of what's going on. And um, they rush them into the OR and the first treatment that needs to happen is going to be to amputate the distal end of the left leg inferior to the knee. In order for them to do that, what they're gonna do is use a marker to color the part of the leg that was amputated. And I always find this one to be a really uh, fun one because once again, kids have a hard time in the beginning of remembering that their right is patient's left. So um, a lot of times they amputate the wrong leg. And so that's always um, one of those things that it's kind of 
um, this is a good good time to be learning those things. Here's some of my students in the classroom and you can see they've just got the supplies on the table. I've given them a whole series of instructions and then when they finish that series of instructions, um, after completing the surgery, send the patient to post-op, which in this case is my desk, uh, to check the diagram. So there's already one that's been done uh, correctly, kind of like your creepy baby doll. And if they got six of six, they're going to clean up their area and dismantle the potato man and collect their bonus buck. If they've got five out of six or less, um, they want to begin reviewing for their malpractice suit. So once again, we can start bringing in what happens when um, things go wrong. So we can uh, discuss a lot of those little legal issues. Um, like I said, um, I find a lot of things that I do. Um, I use a lot of like science labs um, that are just very low, low budget. Um, everything here, I think I bought at Walmart. Um, I bought a dozen or an egg for every student. We soaked it in vinegar overnight to remove that calcium shell. And um, then we uh, soaked it in different types of solution. This really um, helps my students understand the difference between a hypertonic, isotonic, and hypotonic solution uh, when we're talking about IVs and that type of stuff. Um, and you can also see, we also used rubbing alcohol in the case of the rubbing alcohol, you can see one of the eggs um, down there looks like it's hard boiled. And that hard boiled egg is what happens with um, when um, alcohol, like a pregnant mother's uh, drink, um, and their um, baby is exposed to that alcohol, that it can cause a permanent um, denaturization of the protein in that area, which causes deformity or complications for that baby. Um, so we, we talk about all kinds of things, um, but the kids really enjoy doing little labs like this. Um, and like I said, they're really relatively very low budget. And um, you don't actually have to have a lab lab to do it, um, as in you can do it in your classroom. Um, okay, so PowerPoints, we, we all use them and they're wonderful way to um, get a lot of information across to our students. However, one of the things that I really try to emphasize with my new teachers is to um, use basically kind of a chunk and chew methodology. In other words, we're gonna do our, um, start off the class with our bell ringer and use that for a few minutes and then we'll do the PowerPoint. But we're only gonna do about 15 minutes of PowerPoint, um, you know, in a day. And um, after we've done about five or six slides um, in our PowerPoints, we've added in things like remember this in your turn, but you guys can add that into your PowerPoints. But essentially, you're just gonna take a slide that's gonna come up with questions about what you've already talked about in the previous few slides to make sure that students have really caught the concepts that you just went over. Um, you know, sometimes it's um, the actual, what is your turn on the, the medical term words that we were using. So in this case, albino would mean white. So um, just kind of break those things up. Um, don't PowerPoint your students to death. That's not necessarily a good teaching strategy um, if, they, if you want them to love medical terminology. Um, like I said, with your lesson plans, um, basically you want to work it out just like you would any other. Um, in our book, we've actually given you guys lesson plans. However, you can do this on your own, um, but you want to have a hook. Uh, you want to, you know, if you're going to be introducing kids, you can see that I've got a timeline there. Um, and then you're going to have a reinforcement activity, whether it's word surgery, word construction. Um, maybe it's one of the little mini labs. Maybe it's a ponder this or an inquiring mind. Um, but you're going to break that up into um, segments, just like you would in any other class. So, okie dokie. Um, if, you know, uh, make sure that you understand, uh, the kids understand how you want that bell work done. I do a lot of training with my kids the first couple of weeks, but it really pays off later on. Other resources that we do offer is we have like the e-flash cards um, over conditions and treatments, um, diagram drop and drags. There's a lot of things if you do have computer access for kids. Um, that they can use um, that will that are interactive now. Um, 
classes are just so much funner than they used to be when we were taking classes 40 years ago. Okay, maybe 50 years ago, but a while back. Um, you know, um, workbooks are available. Um, you know, um, worksheets are still very, very valuable and you do want to use worksheets um, because there are kids that this is their learning style and that's going to be the most beneficial to them. And um, quite frankly, they're still the easiest way to get a grade many times. So, um, you know, you don't want to do away with them. You just don't want to use them all the time. Um, so basically, I'm hoping that I've had an opportunity here just in this PowerPoint, I'm gonna show you some of these things live real quick, but um, that you feel like it can be an interactive approach. And, um, you know, use different strategies just like you would with any other um, classroom that you're doing. So I am going to see if I can switch the screen here real quick. And Phyllis, you may have to help me. on how we get to the live screen here. You should be able to um, stop sharing. Let's see. Stop sharing? Okay. Mm -hmm. We need to All share right. camera. Okay, so I did stop share and... Did I mean? Okay, Linda, if you talk, then we should be able to see you. Okay, all right. So if I make noise, <laughs> we can, we can see right. you. And then um, we can um, also invite our attendees if they want to put any um, questions in the group, on the Zoom group chat, you can do that. But I know you're going to be um, also showing a few things here. When you speak, we see your face. Okay, all right, excellent. So. Um, okay, so just real quickly, I was, I mentioned that I was going to be, um, I used a lot of like the um, diagram drills, and so you can see I've just placed them in to a page protector, and this allows the kids to write on it. Of course, I grabbed a write, don't you hate that, uh, where you grab a pen that doesn't have any <laughs> ink in it anymore. But uh, they're going to write on that, and then it's easily cleaned, and then it can be reused for every class. So I found that works really good. I also use, um, have one side is the blank side when we're doing word construction um, and word surgery. So um, they come in really handy, um, very, very cheap. Um, I was going to show you real quick the, the lung, where you can see, oh, well, I guess if my hand's right in front of the camera, you won't be able to see that. Um, hopefully, you can see the expansion of the balloon. Uh, when the diaphragm is working, but that's what we're trying to help the kids understand. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you real quick was a foldable. Um, I use foldables with my kids. This is very low tech. My kids have to ride the bus um, over to my campus, and so they use this a lot of times um, as a study guide, um, but basically you can do it either direction where you have the medical term on the outside and then underneath it, you can see that it's got the definition. Um, it's a very low, low tech way of, um, it's kind of like flashcards, but all organized. And you can do it, fold it that direction or you can fold it the other direction where essentially they've got the, the word or the meaning and then they have to know the medical terms. So um, very easy to do. Um, I use that a lot, like I said, with my kids. And then the other thing I wanted to show you real quickly was um, showing you uh, what my bonus bucks look like. Um, essentially, uh, kids just attach this then when they want to use the bonus buck, they simply staple it to the assignment that they want the additional points added. Um, and that makes it very easy. And then I write over it with a Sharpie so it can't be reused. All right, I had a question, but it, it flashed off too quick. Okay, uh, Linda, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so um, there was a question about the grade level. When you were in the classroom, what grade level were your students? Generally, we taught, um, our, our medical terminology was taught at the sophomore level. 
Uh, so okay. the kids had principles the, the ninth year, and then we taught um, medical terminology at the um, sophomore level. Um, and and then for a semester, or is it a semester course, or how, ma how many hours? Um, I like doing it for a year. In Texas, now it's now a year course. I have tried to do it in a semester, and it can... Um, a semester is really difficult because um, that does, you're really having to push the kids so quickly. Um, there's not a lot of opportunity for a lot of activities. Um, that's, that's what kind of has to go if you're going to um, have to do it in a semester setting. Okay. Another uh, question. Went to a year yeah. se setting, my kids were able to challenge it for uh, like dual credit. Um, and then our book is actually aligned with the precision exam where they get, um, they can take um, the precision exam end of year course. There was a question about um, un uncomplicated case studies and scenarios where you might have found those that were, I guess, age appropriate or level appropriate for the high school student. Kim and I is simply, we, they, they really came from our work experience that we decided to write them. And then once we wrote them, you, you just kind of, you've got them you know, down there um, um, on paper, and I would use them year after year. Um, as far as, you know, um, doing that, it, you know, if you just stop and think about whatever unit you're working with, it's very age appropriate to, um, you know, when you're with the um, muscle or bone set, people are going to be in wrecks, or they've been running and they're in a sports accident, you know, so there's broken legs, et cetera, and you can find an x-ray even though it's not that student's x-ray, because like I said, you're, you're changing the names to keep the um, identity really, um, you know, safe. But you could, you could find then an x-ray on your um, Google, go out to Google and simply find, you know, a um, fracture, you know, compound or whatever, you know, you wanted to do. And, and you would use that as part of your scenario. There was a question about um, your um, points or extra credit. And oh, how many you do with each? I think it was your bonus buck. Yes. Okay, so that's really up to teacher by teacher. Um, essentially, I've got um, five points on their daily grade that they could add with one of these and one point on a test. Um, however, I did let kids use multiple. So if they took a test and they needed, um, they wanted four points, um, you know, on a test, they could add four of them, but that would be your role, totally a classroom teacher um, choice. Um, my kids usually averaged most of them if they were working at it, they would average getting two um, a week. Um, some of my really um, studious kids that would study every night for those diagram drills might get three a week, uh, but generally kids would only get about two a week. So they, they could get possibly four points extra on a, a major test if they wanted to. Hopefully I answered that. You did. There, there's also a question about, um, did you arrange your class along the body systems? Yes, yes. Um, I feel like to me, that's this, just the obvious way, obvious way to go. So I um, start off with, um, just basics of um, kind of like you would with um, anatomy and physiology, where I am going to use, um, start with just um, body systems and tissues and cells. And then we go into um, one of the body systems and we just start progressing from there. Okay, I'm not... Hello? I'm not seeing any additional questions in the okay. chat, um, but um, is there anything that you've thought, oh, I meant to tell them this? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. Well, just, just a quick um, rehash there, then, you know, for HOSA, um, there's a lot of, um, if you will start thinking about different skills, if you will go um, into the National HOSA website, uh, and competitive events, you can actually um, find rubrics for most of those skills so that you don't have to redo those. Um, and they really give that kid the step-by-step -step, um, where we're not trying to master these skills in medical terminology, but we wanna give them exposure to it, um, which I think is great. 
Um, enjoy that hands-on too, I'm sure. Yes, they do. Um, that, that really um, um, makes medical terminology so much more fun. Um, I was going to show you what I meant by a diagram card real quick. Um, a diagram card, essentially, um, I made these up for my kids, but you can see I've got a little man on one side and on the other side, sorry, I have the medical term. Um, in this case, it's hypogastric, but then I actually have the drawing and you can see the body regions and then I put a star there. Um, but for a lot of my kids who are very visual, this is really helpful for constantly reinforcing where to find that body part. So um, I did those. Um, they were really relatively easy to do. Uh, and once I, you've got the pattern, you can make new ones as often as you need to kind of thing. So um, let's see. I think I mentioned using, um, you know, uh, clay, um, you know, a lot. Um, like such with anatomy and clay and, and Starla's um, teaching tips. Um, pocket nurse, um, that's, that's generally who I would order um, a lot of my lab supplies from. Um, as in Dollar Tree and Walmart, they don't have everything that I need um, or that I would like the kids to experience. So, um, and then like I said, uh, we are, our book is actually aligned with the precision exam um a hundred percent so that if you are looking for a certification type to prove um, students knowledge in that area um that's one way that you can do that i know well, certifications you, are really important when you talk about the precision exams um certifications and your and uh your medical terminology course the way you teach it being aligned to that are you are you speaking of the national health science assessment or their medical terminology assessment because they have it's, it's their medical terminology okay. assessment okay good all right but i do believe that um you know what medical term you know um we're basically very aligned with the national consortium um, um standards also um in order to you know finish that out for the year and there is a question here, don't leave. I know we have about uh, five more minutes. There's a question here. Could you give some guidance on the fun facts? Oh, on the fun facts. Okay, so on the fun facts, essentially um, what I would do on Fun Fact Friday with my kids is I would, um, like I said, I would pick, a. we would just rotate tables, okay? Uh, so this week was the first week in the six weeks. So it was table group one. They got to go and find uh, fun facts for whatever chapter we were going to be on that week. And they would know this at the beginning of the week. And then they would go out onto the internet and find out fun facts. And, you know, fun facts can be anywhere from, you know, the intestines is this many feet long in a giraffe or, you know, giraffes have seven uh, vertebra um, cervical vertebra, just like we do, you know, so it's just, <coughs> excuse me, um, fun facts that are out there that they can find on um, basically the internet that have to do with that body system. And then they would have an opportunity to um, pretty much just present them to the kids, um, you know, in the class on Fun Fact Friday. And it usually was only, you know, a, about a 10 minute thing that we would do on Fridays, but it just kind of broke up um, and was a fun way to celebrate Fridays, actually. Hopefully that answered it. Well, I had a question, I believe, where someone asked if the PowerPoint would be available and, and you said, and you mentioned that at the beginning that it will. So give us about a week. There is um, a <laughs> dropout box at healthscienceconsortium.org that says events. And then one of the uh, categories under there is webinars. And so you'll see um, all the webinars that we've done to date archived there. Linda's uh, medical terminology focused one will be there probably early next week. And in addition to this recording, we will also have her um, PowerPoint there. And then Linda, we do have two or three people here that said, thank you, thank you, thank you. And so I just want to um, join them and saying that we appreciate you. Um, given your time here to um, expand teachers um, teaching ideas about medical terminology. Uh, we, there's no doubt that you love the subject 
area. We can tell that for sure. So, um, we hope too that you'll come to Charleston since you have a perfect, you have sort of a attendance streak going to uh, being at the National Health Science Conference. So we'd love to have you there um, in uh, October as well. Oh, we'd love and to. And Nancy, somebody, somebody asked if there was an online version of her book. <clears throat> yes, ma'am, okay. there is. Okay. And Nancy, they want to know again about where the PowerPoint will be located. <clears throat> okay, I think I just said that. So it'll I be. Know, but they want you to repeat it again. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's um, if you go to healthscienceconsortium.org, it's the longest uh, URL in the world, but that is our <laughs> um, web site. And then there's a, um, across a tab across the top that says events. And then under events, there is a, another tab that says webinars. And so you, there's also a search there that you could do for webinars. But under the events tab, you'll find information about the National Health Science Conference, as well as the webinars will, or will be there. It, um, but we, do, we are dependent on someone to get this um, up for us. So that's why I'm saying it won't be, it, it may not be there tomorrow, but hopefully it'll be there early next week. And then we'll be doing our uh, next wet Wednesday webinar will be next um, Wednesday at 4 p.m. Central. And it will be on um, teaching the Generation Z students. So um, we hope that if you have time in your schedule that you can come. And if you can't, we certainly um, welcome you to go on and, and uh, take advantage of the recordings. And it looks like Linda's showing us one more thing. Yes, um, I just saw one of the chat questions wanting to know the name of the book um, that um, I got to help write. And it's um, a hard one. It's Introduction to Medical Terminology. Um, and it is through Good Heart Wilcox. Okay, thank you, everyone. We look forward to um, having you at um, future webinars. And Linda, we just appreciate all that uh, you did for us today. Thank you. All right, I think we may be off. Thank you so much for the recording. Well, we appreciate all you did. And, uh, yeah, I'm gonna get the meeting for everybody. Thanks for everything. Anything else, Linda? So, do what, ma'am? Is there anything else we can, do you need any help with anything? You no, could? no, I, I don't. Just do I check out and leave meeting at this point? Yeah. Okay. Yes, you do. That's fine. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you so bye much bye. for letting me do this.